Hello and welcome to the compression demonstration. Most people already know what compressors do. They basically take an input signal, attenuate the loudest portions of it, or reduce the level. The controls, most people already know, but just a refresher, a threshold, determines the point at which the compressor is going to start working in reference to level. So in this case, a level over minus 5 dB on the input side is going to cause the compressor to start clamping down the signal. Here, a minus 10 dB, any level coming into the compressor over minus 10 dB is going to start clamping the signal. Ratio, in the case of 2 to 1, if the input signal increases by 2 decibels, the output signal is only going to increase by 1 decibel. If the input signal increases by 6 decibels, then the output's only going to increase by 1 decibel, hence the term 6 to 1. Attack and release are determined in time. In this case, milliseconds, we have a 6 millisecond attack time. This is how long it takes the compressor to clamp down on the signal once the input has gone above the threshold. Release in seconds in this case is how long it takes for the signal to be released by the compressor after it's dropped below the threshold. So 0.3 seconds in that case, 0.5 seconds in that case. I'm going to explain a little bit about setting a compressor. Different manufacturers define their numbers in different ways. For instance, threshold and ratio often work together. In a soft knee compressor like this one, the semi-soft knee, the compressor will actually start working a little bit below the threshold and reach its full compression ratio a little bit above the threshold. Uh, in some compressors, this might be 20-30 dB. In some compressors, uh, any input signal above minus 10 dB at all is going to have the full ratio applied to it. And if it drops below that threshold at all, it's going to have absolutely no compression applied to it. Attack and release, these again depend on the manufacturer. Uh, some people say it'll take 6 milliseconds for the compressor to reach its full compression. This is especially common in plug-in or digital compressors. Some will say 70%, some say 50%, it really depends. Same thing with release. This is why compression charts do not work. Plus it's subjective. I'm going to play some music here. I'm going to increase the attack and release as fast as they will go, increase the ratio as high as it will go, and bring up the threshold all the way. Gain I'm not going to touch because this is just an output level. What I'm doing now is I'm going to determine where I want the threshold to be. Wait till, wait till this music gets going because if you start using it on soft passages you're going to over compress the loud portion. Alright, this is a good place right here. I'm going to reduce this until I constantly see the compressor clamping and letting go of the signal. If you reduce it too much so that's always working, all you're doing is reducing the volume. If you have it too high so that's not clamping the signal at all, you're not doing anything. So you want it to be clamping and releasing constantly. Alright, that's good. Now I'm going to lower the attack. I'm going to increase the attack time until I get the get the punch I want, basically. If I want a smoother sound, I'm going to use a very long attack. If I want a very punchy sound, I'm going to use a shorter attack. Alright, that sounds okay. Now I'm going to increase the release time to get the smoothness I want. Both attack and release time depend a lot on the tempo. So a uh, slower song, you're probably going to want a, a slower attack and release time than a fast song. Right, it's pumping a little bit. Alright, so basically the compressor is going to let go of the signal before the next downbeat. 300 mil, uh, milliseconds sounds pretty good in this case. I'm going to reduce the ratio until I get the amount of compression I want. I think I'm going to increase this attack time a little bit. That sounds pretty good. It's a little more compression than I want. I think I'm going to reduce the ratio a little bit. That's pretty good. I'm going to increase the gain here to get the volume I want. 
Now again, this is highly subjective, so one engineer is going to treat this same music differently than another, and it doesn't matter whether you're compressing your guitar or bass or voice or whatever, it all depends on what you want and the nature of what you're feeding into it. So you're going to treat classical music different from hard rock, you're going to treat a banjo differently from speech. Just remember these basic steps, and the most important thing is to listen. Thank you.